haul. So you asked for a gear review and you might get more than you can handle right now, but I have all of my stuff strode out here at Whitney's house, like literally all over this room. It's craziness. Uh, yeah. Every, everywhere. This is, this is gear. This is what you asked for. So all of you gear nuts, I hope you're happy for what you've done. Made this mess in here. But anyway, so I just want to start out with, um, there are, like, the main things you need to figure out when you're about to hike is what pack am I going to carry, uh, my sleeping bag, and my shelter. So those are, like, to me, the three essentials and everything else kind of works itself out from there. So this is my pack here, and um, it's an Osprey Aura. It's the new um, Osprey Aura, and uh, it's a 50-liter pack. So, um... You can buy all of your gear and then take it in to wherever you buy your pack. I got mine at REI and do it that way or you can just guess and I read a book that mentioned 50 to 65 liter is probably good so I was like well I'm trying to limit my weight so I'm going to make everything fit into a 50 liter pack. So I got my 50 liter pack and was like hope it fits. So anyway, um, it started, it came with a brain. This is um, what goes on top of the pack and I started the trail with that but you learn how to cull some stuff pretty quick. So I got rid of the brain and didn't use it anymore. Um, so yeah, uh, I would recommend highly being sized for your pack. Um, I went into REI and I spent four hours with the pack guy. I think he was sick of me. He probably knew my social security number my whole life before we left. But um, anyway, so he really helped me. He put weighted pillows and stuff in here. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was just, very helpful. All the folks at REI are very, very helpful. Um, they will spend time with you talking about gear. Most of them have been outdoors before. And uh, with REI, you can return anything, que no questions asked, up to a year. So that's like awesome. And then also, if you become a member, you get like a percentage back on um, the purchases you make there. And you know, but anyway, so just like member benefits. But uh, so yeah, Pat Guy helped me. I walked in there and I'm like, I don't really like the way that pack looks. I'm not even going to try that one on. And I tried on like everything else under the sun and then I was like, you know what? This isn't a beauty pageant and a fashion show. So I don't really care what it looks like. It felt the best and that's what I got. So this is my pack. Um, next, uh, sleeping, shelter. So I started with a hammock and a lot of people have asked me why I swapped to a tent. So I started with a two person hammock and I created my own rain fly. Um, I also created uh, my own bug net. I sewed it. Um, and those are things that you can definitely do. Uh, they're a lot cheaper to do that way. Um, but my whole hammock setup was four pounds. So um, this tent here is two pounds, five ounces for a two person tent. So uh, you really can't beat that. And I wasn't an experienced hammock camper. so. Um, but I am familiar with tents, so it was just more of like a comfort thing, you know. Um, so anyway, this is my tent. I have the Fly Creek UL2 uh, Big Agnes. Uh, it is awesome. Like, I can't say enough about this. Paid $40 more for a two-person, and it was four ounces more um, So for the two-person. But uh, I never got wet using this tent. Um, there was plenty of room for my stuff. Uh, you can sleep with another person in there and your packs up on your feet if you have to. So I definitely recommend this. You know, I, of course I didn't have any other tent, but like I would use this again in a heartbeat. So, um, and yeah. All right, next, sleeping bag. Um, so this is my sleeping bag here. It's a 23 degree down bag, but it's the um, treated down that uh, I guess is more water resistant so it doesn't become completely worthless because you have either synthetic or down. And uh, with this dry down, it's uh, down bags are usually lighter um, and uh, they squish up to a smaller space so it doesn't take as, up as much room in your pack. But um, if down gets wet, it's known for like, it no longer has an R value. so you're, um, you're going to be cold basically if you're down bag and sweat, but there are still, you know, some insulating part of synthetic materials that will help keep you warm, even if they get wet. So that's, there's pros and cons to each thing. You can research that more, but I went with dry down, 
dry down bag. Again, got this at REI. And um, honestly, I don't even remember. Sierra Designs. It's a men's because apparently the women's is just more expensive because it's prettier. And I just didn't care about that. So, uh, 2.19 pounds for my sleeping bag. So, and it came with this um, sack here. A lot of people want dry sacks for sleeping bags. I just kept mine in this um, contractor bag in my pack. So, it never got wet. I never had any issues with that. Um, you just have to make sure you're careful to keep your stuff dry. So, that's that. Um, sleeping bag liner. At the beginning, you'll care a little bit if you're stinky or if your stuff's stinky. That's another thing. Synthetic bag you can wash in every town you go to. Uh, down bags have to be washed in special ways. So, if that's something that concerns you, you know, you might want to consider that. But, I just slept with a silk liner mainly um, just so I could take it out and wash it if I got to town and thought that I was smelling really bad, but after a while, I just didn't care if I smelled bad anymore. So that worked really well for me in the winter. The only nights I was cold, I was cold one or two nights in the Smokies when I had gotten wet during the day, and then in Maine, it got really cold, but it got below 23 degrees a few times. So, but yeah, mine was a 23 degree bag again. In the summertime, I used a fleece liner, sleeping bag liner, as my sleeping bag instead of my sleeping bag because it was lighter, um, it saved me more room, uh, and you know, you just want to lighten your pack. So in the summertime, you don't need a 23 degree bag because you're burning up. You know, sometimes I had to sleep on the top of this. So, um, this definitely did the trick. I carried this from some point in Virginia all the way to, I think, Vermont. So, there you go. And then, oh, sleeping pad. I started with a blue foam sleeping pad that I got from like just an outdoor store. Uh, it was very light, but after a while I got to where I could not make myself sleep on my back or my stomach anymore, and I'd wake up with my hips killing me. So I said enough of that. And I bit the bullet and got a um, Thermarest. And it's the like extra light one. Um, I don't remember how much it weighs. It's less than a pound. I know that. Ooh, it's still kind of damp. Um, but it's inflatable, so you just, you know, that's, you do have to blow it up every night when you're tired. But yeah, it's the Neo Air. That's what it's called. Thermarest Neo Air. So um, definitely worth the money if you can't make yourself sleep on your back. So uh, I would, I would definitely use this again over a foam pad. You know, I thought, nah, I can tough it out. You know, I don't need a fancy pad. Yeah. After you get tired of not sleeping for a while, you'll, uh, you'll want a fancy sleeping pad. Okay, and all right, so moving on to clothes. Okay, you learn a lot about yourself uh, while you're doing this, so you're not gonna pick out the most perfect thing and you'll end up sending some stuff home and begging somebody to send some stuff to you. But, um, puffy jacket. This is one thing I kept with me the whole time. Like, even in the summertime, I have my puffy coat with me. And I just, yeah, I, I would. I don't care about the extra weight. If you get cold, you want something, and this was it. So, um, mine is not down. This is synthetic because I wanted to be able to wash it. And um, honestly, the reason I picked this one is it was on sale at REI. So I would recommend getting one that has a hood, um, even if you have a a, a hat, a toboggan, a beanie, whatever you call it. Uh, if you have one of those, like, you're still, like, your neck's cold and everything, so it's just really nice to be able to have something with a hood on it. So, I would recommend, if you're deciding between two different ones, get the one with the hood. Um, then, okay, so, when I started out in, when it, well, when I started out, it was cool, but in the summertime, anyway, let's go over that stuff. Um, at first, I wanted to carry two tank tops because I was like, oh, I want to wear one for a couple days, and then when one gets extra stinky, then I'll carry the other one. Um, after a while, I just cared about weight and I got rid of one of the tank tops, but uh, this is a Walmart tank top, just the synthetic material. You want to hike in synthetic clothes. It's not as much of a big deal in the summertime. Um, you know, they say cotton kills and it's basically the cotton uh, doesn't keep you warm when it's wet. So uh, you don't want hypothermia, it's just not fun. So it's safe to err on the side of everything synthetic, but in the summertime it's just not that big of a deal. And then this top here. It's very airy. This is a North Face top that I got like while I was on the trail somewhere, probably on sale. Um, so again, it doesn't have to be fancy brands and all that. Um, and then I hiked in these shorts. I think these are, yeah, these are Patagonia shorts. Again, probably on sale. These held up 
over the rocks and the whites. Um, so maybe your shorts you might actually want to make sure they're pretty stout. Um, but yeah, these lasted sliding because you get on your butt and slide over rocks all the time in the whites. So um, Patagonia, I don't know if they're any certain kind. But anyway, yeah, these shorts were awesome. Just make sure you're comfortable. You're going to be in this stuff every day for like six months. So just it just needs to be comfortable. It's not a fashion show. I promise you nobody cares what you're wearing out there more than you and after a little while you do not care as long as you're covered up. Um, so yeah, I wore the same shorts every day um, and then rotated tank tops until I didn't care about it anymore and then I got rid of one of my tank tops. Um, undergarments for ladies, uh, just find a sports bra that's comfortable. Again, you're going to be wearing it. It doesn't matter how cute it is or anything like that. Just something that's comfortable. So um, I had two of those for a while also until I swapped out um, clothes and I just I got rid of one of the sports bras. I don't care if I stink. I'm hiking. Um, okay, while you're doing laundry, what do you wear? I decided I, at first when it was cold, I wore rain gear. I wore my frog togs, which I'll show you in a minute. But um, I just you know you just wear something while your laundry is going. But in the summertime, I was like, well, you know rain gear is hot so I just got a little sundress and for you ladies it was something that I didn't have to wear a bra with because your bra is being washed right so um, just a little sundress and this was my clean outfit so I only wore this like while I was doing laundry and after I had showered I did not wear this on the trail at all and then um, sleeping gear so this is while it's warm again I chose cotton cotton shorts and a cotton tank top because and again these are from Walmart um, Lion King. Uh, but anyway, just something to allow you to breathe, you know. Um, you just want to take everything off, like your undergarments and stuff, and allow your body to just like air out. Um, so that's why I picked this stuff. And again, cotton is safe in the summertime. So um, now, when it's cold, uh, I would hike in my shorts and my tank top with my frog togs over the top when it's raining. Um, that, helps you know keep you warm because you're trucking and you got you know something on uh, when it was really cold I would put on my sleeping clothes or like my um, uh, puffy coat but if it's raining and cold you're just gonna have to be cold because you do not want to get your sleeping cold clothes wet hypothermia otherwise you're gonna get hypothermia so sleeping clothes need to stay dry at all times but I wore this shirt for a while um, you could use this instead of like a tank top, but I ended up sending this home and not wearing it because there was really no point. It was just to have a change of clothes and that's just, that's just silly. So anyway, all right. Um, also, I wore these for a while. Uh, three quarter britches or whatever. Um, you can have this to where if it's kind of cool out when you start in the morning and stuff like that. But again, it's not a fashion show. If you're cold, put your rain pants on, you know, and then when you get warm, take them off and wear shorts. But when you start hiking, you warm up. It's crazy. Like I would be, sometimes I was in shorts when it was really cold outside, but it was just, you're moving and you get warm. So again, just minimize it as much as possible, but whatever makes you comfortable when you start and you'll learn. Um, I had this. Uh, Under Armour, it's fuzzy on the inside, again on sale. One thing that I really liked about this shirt though was the thumb holes um, so that I could you know, kind of keep my hands warm while I'm using my trekking poles and stuff. I didn't have gloves until the very end at Katahdin and I should have had a better pair because the ones I had were basically worthless because Walmart. But um, yeah, and then these leggings. So I slept in this long sleeve top and hiked in it when it was dry outside if I was really cold and then these fuzzy leggings um, I slept in or wore to hike in when it was really cold outside and it was dry. But sleeping clothes keep dry. Um, and then gloves. Get some good gloves if you're going to be in the snow or ice um, waterproof. Otherwise there's no point in having gloves. Really there's not. Um, extra pair of socks. You can wear extra pair of socks on your hands instead of gloves. I did that a bunch of times while I was actually hacking. But okay sock review. Um, I have a bunch of different pair. I would sleep in a big puffy pair of wool socks if I was you. That's what I would sleep in. Then when you hike during the day, you want your socks to be thin because you don't want, uh, at least that's how I liked it. I didn't want anything that you know made my foot tighter in the shoe than it already was. Um, so I went with something thin that felt kind of slick and it, I don't know, it, I 
didn't have any blisters or anything like that the whole time, but those in Gingy socks apparently help with blisters. But um, I used Smart Wools, I used um, Darn Tough socks. Um, the one thing I will say about Darn Tough socks is they dare you to wear a hole in them. So if you do manage to wear a hole in them, they will replace them. So that's one benefit and they're, they may be a little bit more than Smart Wools, but I would go with a good pair of wool socks though because again, um, like merino wool helps your feet not smell as bad supposedly and you're going to be wearing these guys for like a long, 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 long time. So they might as well be good. Um, and I, is about the number of socks that I carried. I carried one pair to sleep in and those were always my sleeping socks only. Even if I had to put it on, on wet socks the next morning, you have to have a warm pair of sleeping socks. And then uh, at least two pair to hike in, to rotate out. But I really liked having three pair to hike in. So I probably had about four pairs of socks. That might be too much, but that's just personal preference and you'll figure that out. And then um, you have to keep your clothes dry, right? So I would put those down in my contractor bag also with my sleeping bag. Um, but I had a dry sack to put my sleeping clothes in at least because those are the ones you don't want getting wet. So this came with my pack. It's a three liter dry bag and um, I would just put you know the stuff I want to keep dry in there. And then last piece of kind of clothing um, is you want to have a few hankies with you um, whether you ladies use them as a pee rag or you want to blow your nose or you your tent gets wet and you want something to wipe it out and you're like if I just had a towel right now or whatever like this these become your friends so I would suggest having at least one maybe two um, until you figure out you know what you like. Okay so now like food and drink ish you know the kitchen your kitchen so this is my kitchen I use the MSR pocket rocket stove um, would use it again. All of this stuff that I'm showing you, I would use again. Um, so it just looks like this and you just screw it right onto your fuel canister and voila, stove. It's not hard to move this one and sweep behind it. <laughs> but anyway, um, all right, so you can use fancy pots. I just was trying to spend as little as possible when I got this stuff but still get good stuff when I needed good stuff and then like kind of scoot by you know on the other stuff so uh, everyone will yell at me right now because I cooked in aluminum but you know what I wasn't using deodorant so I figured it offset my aluminum intake uh, you know for not using deodorant on the trail but anyway this is an aluminum grease pot um, I don't know if you can see but it says grease on the uh, lid there and then I just modified it a little bit by putting this guy in here and because uh, basically what I wanted to do I wanted to be able to cook on a fire if I wanted to and it had a plastic knob on it so I was afraid that it would melt um, so let me get all right so this is my food bag by the way um, let's see got some duct tape uh, fix fixtures there um, repair and whatever um, but it was still like I never had any water in it um, or anything like that but anyway you can tell me ADD I'm getting sidetracked here so uh, yes the pot want to cook on the fire so when you want to like open the lid and you know whatever I have this little nifty uh, titanium spork here I think it was like seven bucks go ahead and get a titanium spork it'll last you I knew a bunch of people that broke their plastic ones and you know we're just kind of left hanging so um, this guy lasted me the whole time but you know I could just beep, lift my lid off like that and check on it while I was in the fire or while I was on my stove you know um, so I like that and then again it was a uh, metal knob so it didn't melt off but this lasted me the whole time this grease pot was like seven or eight bucks at Kmart so if you want to cut a corner that's what you do now this guy right here is a um, cozy a pot cozy I made this myself got this out of the reflectix material um, you can probably cut up other things to make this um, and then there's uh, the the tape for that but I repaired it with duct tape when it started coming apart um, but basically what you do you boil your food so if you're eating noodles for dinner you boil the noodles once they come to boil you put them in this and let it set for a while and you just have to have the patience to not eat it sometimes you're so hungry you'll eat it crunchy you don't care um, but 
you let it set for about 10 minutes and that way you're conserving your fuel um, you're not spending as much money on fuel and uh, not using as much up and you know it's still and this is so light so it doesn't really add that much weight to it um, again my spork and uh, you want to have yourself a good ladder this big ladder right here lasted me the entire trail I used this same ladder the whole time but this is my backup just in case you want a backup ladder just in case um, I liked drinking coffee every morning I could have just drank it out of my pot but sometimes I made oatmeal and so anyway I would make coffee and I would put my instant coffee in this cup this is a sea to summit um, collapsible cup and I just you know it fit in there and everything so that's basically it um, for that stuff water filtration I know I showed you this in a video before this is the platypus uh, gravity filter so you just put your clean bag on the end and your dirty water goes in here and you hang it up and don't think about it and the water filters for you through this guy so that's my preferred method I would do that again uh, if I win a hike another trail um, this you got a clean water bottle and a dirty water bottle and you know you just have to know the difference between the two I would recommend using like a Powerade or a Gatorade because it's like thicker plastic so it holds up a little bit better you know you're always scooping on rocks and whatever um, and you would be surprised how like attached you get to this and it's like no, I've had this one for 300 miles I don't want to throw it away but uh, yeah so and then I use a smart water bottle for um, my clean water bottle because um, you have to back flush your filters you know while you're hacking and stuff so the little spout on the end of the smart water bottle um, would fit on there and also fits on the Sawyer's uh, Sawyer squeezes to back flush them so you don't need to carry that little syringe to back flush it's just one less thing that you have to have so um, and then also a handkerchief for like my you know it's like my heat pad my hot pot holder so um, or to wipe up any food mess or whatever it just and it's got like t-shirt material on one side because that absorbs a little bit better and then your hanky on the other side but again personal preference to figure that stuff out but um, yeah my food bag was pretty cheap I don't remember exactly how much this is a I want to say 15 liter bag um, and it held pretty much all of my food so worked out good for me all right the odds and ends um, this little baggie here uh, was what my fleece sleeping bag came in but you want something to just kind of keep all of your little loose ends and stuff together um, so that's what I used uh, pepper spray I think that this is vital for hitchhiking for your own personal confidence and knowing that you can keep yourself safe and for your parents sanity and friends so that you're like well I brought pepper spray I'm good I'm safe you know so um, pepper spray I actually kept this in my hip belt of my pack and that's one thing also I didn't mention about the pack that I really liked um, the big hip belts you know and the the um, anti-gravity system on the pack but you just have to you'll just have to get your pack to work for you um, but anyway so I kept that in my hip belt and a pocket knife uh, just a Gerber a light you know little um, pocket knife and uh, alright so back to this little bag so this is like toiletries electronics you know your phone charger your um, medical kit your um, duct tape all that stuff will go in here um, so this is like I've got Tums in here anti-diarrheal medicine um, a little like duct tape rolled up on itself a needle um, you want to have dental floss so like you can make repairs with your needle uh, I've repaired frog togs like that um, just band-aids maybe a little thing I need for and you know whatever um, but that is some stuff that you need uh, and then toiletries this doesn't have everything I used in it but um, super glue it's not really toiletry but um, ear swabs, a mirror, uh, this is a bouncy ball to roll my feet out because of plantar fasciitis, but hopefully I won't have to fool with that. Um, for girls, conditioner, because you don't want to spend an hour combing your hair out, a comb, and little things like that, um, yeah, here's my dental floss, some hair ties, you know, whatever, clippers, but for a detailed list of all that, I'm going to have, like, all of that detailed out in the ebook that I will be putting out soon. So y'all can check that out.
And then a uh, bear cord um, and a little carabiner on the end of it. Uh, so, but you'll, you can read reviews on all this stuff. Um, I don't even exactly remember where I got my bear cord from. Maybe Z-Packs, but hang your bear bag um, is what that's for. And then a little patch kit for my Neo Air um, Thermarest, my sleeping pad, because that's the one thing about the inflatable sleeping pads. Uh, if it gets a hole in it, you're not really sleeping comfortably that night. <laughs> where your foam pad won't deflate, but um, so yeah, repair kit for that. And then electronics. So how did you charge your cell phone? Backup battery charger. Um, this one, SoundLogic XT. This gave me like two and a half charges. Um, so you just charge these when you're in a town and then um, you charge your phone from it, you know, out on the trail, but um, oh look, there's still a little charge left. Up. But I used that one. Um, the first one I used was this guy here, and this only gave me like one charge, maybe. Um, so, you know, you want to go ahead and go with one that might weigh a little bit more, but it'll give you more charges. And then a headlamp. You need to make sure you have a good headlamp because, and preferably one with the red beam. Um, <laughs> but anyway, because uh, when you're walking up to a shelter at night, you don't want to be the jerk that has the bright light like, hey, what's going on? You know, so um, the red light's good or if you want to read, that way you're not disrupting people. But um, yeah, you want a bright beam because if you decide to night hike, go to the privy at night, whatever reason, you want a good headlamp. Um, even if it weighs a little bit more, that's worth it. That's weight is worth it. And then of course all your chargers and whatnot for your backup battery charger and your phone charger. And then backup batteries for your headlamp. But again, those are all things that y'all will figure out as you go in your personal preferences. Okay. Okay. So footwear. All right. So I went through so much footwear, and this isn't even all of it right here. But um, insoles. You can read about all kinds of different insoles, and you know what? Your feet are going to decide what they like while you're out there. So. Maybe the good thing would be to test some out before you go in your shoes, but by all means, don't cancel your AT trip just because you didn't test out insoles. Just You can even go with what's factory in your shoes, but um, these are the sole brand. Um, the good thing about these is you can heat them up in the oven and then you put them in your shoes and they fit to your feet, so that's good. Um, I think they're like 40 to $50. These are super feet. You will hear all about super feet and people on online forums will swear by these. They work great for some people and then some people they don't. Um, the super feet and the sole brands, they did fine for me, you know, I thought. Um, I, I, know, I don't really know what caused my plantar fasciitis. I'm going to hazard a guess and say it was because I wore my shoes for too long and the support was gone in them. I don't know. But um, so these are the shoes that I was wearing when I got plantar fasciitis, but that's like I said, I had these for like 700 miles. These were my favorite pair of shoes I had. These are Solomon's. Um, I got them half off at Trail Days and that's why I bought them. Um, they're men's, uh, but Solomon's, they're very, they're pretty lightweight. Um, they dry out fast. These are not Gore-Tex. Uh, I started with a pair of Gore-Tex. Um, well, actually I started with boots, but they gave me um, tendonitis in my Achilles. So uh, I just didn't like that heavy, I felt like like they were heavy clod hoppers or something, you know. So I wanted something light and I like Solomon's. So I wore Solomon's the rest of the time. I wore a Gore-Tex pair, but eventually they start leaking. I mean, they're not, you know, made for like to last you forever, right? So they start leaking. Um, they don't dry out as fast, you know. Uh, so anyway, I would go with these pair and that's what I finished in. So I'm not like, oh my God, these shoes gave me plantar fasciitis. I wore these shoes out for like 700 miles, which is way longer than they should have lasted. And uh, so anyway, I ended up, my shoe setup when I finished were these Dr. Scholl's um, $20 insoles at Walmart for plantar fasciitis because these saved my feet and getting a new pair of shoes saved my feet. So um, these shoes are awesome though and you can tell these look a little bit better than the other ones but uh, you know it's kind of funny you'll see you, you walk in weird ways or whatever because like my toe busted out right here in all of the shoes I had. But um, yeah, I would swear by Solomon's. They're definitely the most popular brand on the trail, and I think that you know either you really like them or you don't. But there's very few people I think that don't like them. Um, so yeah, if I had to just recommend a pair to somebody, it'd be Solomon's. So, and uh, I'm gonna put a link for some of these products on my blog. 
Um, so y'all can check that out if you want to see, you know, detailed pictures of it and stuff like that. Yeah, description below. Oh, and my blog, Whitney says to tell you, is in the description below. And the fashionable thing today in rain gear is frog togs. Just kidding, it's not fashionable at all. It looks terrible. You're gonna feel like a huge blob of khaki or like a blueberry, because my last pair was blue. But uh, I have to brag on the frog togs. Um, to be completely honest, they kept me pretty dry. They kept me warm. Uh, they don't have pit zips. So if you're gonna buy fancy rain gear, get pit zips. But if you want a $20 rain suit and you're trying to limit your expenses on hiking the AT, voila, frog togs. Um, they do tear easy, but you know what, the AT, Despite popular belief, it's not bushwhacking. You're not like walking through the like, like going through the jungle and stuff like that. You're like uh, walking a beaten path, so that a lot of people hike. So um, anyway, yeah, I have to brag on them and say they worked out really well for me. This was my second pair, so overall I spent $40 for 2,200 miles of trail um, in the way of rain gear. So they repair very well with duct tape or with sewing with floss, um, and. They, I mean, they're kind of breathable, you know, because they're kind of baggy and stuff, so you get a little airflow. And then they're not like um, like a poncho feeling on the inside. They're like um, soft-ish. So anyway, not cute, but keeps you dry, does the trick, not expensive. Nobody cares what you wear, what you look like. So I would recommend frog dogs. And then for my pack, because you got to keep your pack dry, right? Uh, this was the pack cover that came with my pack. Um, some people, especially if you have a foam sleeping pad or something hanging on the outside of your pack, uh, you want um, a bigger pack cover. But anyway, this one worked fine for me. This came with the Osprey pack, so there you go. And uh, the only thing that I forgot was camp shoes. Some people like uh, Crocs. Uh, I've never had a pair of Crocs, so, but those work wonderfully. Um, or anything that you can like strap on your feet so when you're fording the rivers and stuff in Maine. Uh, but some people just go barefooted. I wore these and they worked fine. Um, but I had some strap on ones for a little while, but they were heavy. They were Tevas and they were just like heavy plastic. These foam bad boys right here, they're comfortable. You know, they're awesome. The only thing is when it gets cold, you're gonna want socks on with your camp shoes. So, um, you know, I, had, I looked like a Ninja Turtle. My feet looked like Ninja Turtles because, you know, it was just like, I would mash it down between my big toes so it would fit, but uh, you could get toe socks and it would be a little more convenient. But anyway, so that is all of my gear. That is what it takes to hike the Appalachian Trail. Oh, except my trekking poles. But those are up on Katahdin somewhere. So if anybody finds a pair of REI trekking poles up on Katahdin, please, please, please return them. That would be wonderful because I'm actually very sad. And um, trekking poles, the main rundown, I mean, there's all kinds of different ones and whatever. Um, there are lighter pairs, you know, the lighter they are, probably the more expensive they are, the heavier they are, the, probably the cheaper they are. Um, you do want to get a good, a, a decent pair, at least middle, middle way. I think I paid like $90 for my REI ones because, well, they're going to be with you the whole time. And there are times where you're putting all of your weight on them to come down, especially in the whites. So you're trusting those trekking poles with your life because if they collapse, boom, you're gonna tumble down the rocks. So definitely go with a good and decent um, set of trekking poles if you use them. Some people don't even use trekking poles, but I like them. They work for my knees. Um, so I would definitely also go with the cork grips, personal preference, uh, because the um, foam ones, I feel like would make your hands sweaty and they would like slide around and feel gross and the cork kind of absorb them. You know, absorb your sweat a little bit more um, so yeah but that's basically it so uh, but for more detailed information uh, like I said I will be coming out with an ebook that will have a section covering all of my gear and my recommendations so y'all check it out okay so I am here at Amicalola uh, State Park and I am about to hike the approach trail uh, just weighed my pack in and Sign the register.